his fourth gold Paralympic medal. He's also got two World Championship medals. The European champion Marcel Hoog, who set the Paralympic record in his semi-final. Looked very strong, holding off Daniel Romanchuk. Romanchuk was in five events in Rio. Didn't qualify out of the first round in any of them. Watch out for him, though, because he's the world record holder. Bit of movement required because there is Romanchuk. He's in the number 10 helmet, which means he has to start on the outside. So a bit of shuffling around, just uh, giving him a chance to get his wheelchair in there. Marcel Hoog. Paralympic record set in the semi-final. Hoog won gold in 2016 in the 800 metres. He finally broke his Paralympic duck. He's got 23 world championship records, Marcel Hoog. Manchuk won the 2019 Marathon World Championships. He is one to be watched. Da Yun Kung, 10th in 2019 at the Worlds. Pritharek Konkrak of Thailand, 5th back in 2019. Proat Waharam, the reigning champion. He's been around for a long time. He's got experience. Home favourite, Higuchi Masayuki, who was in fourth position, just missing out on the medal in Rio. Julian Cassily, bronze in 2012 and bronze in the Euros in 2018 and 2021 as well. There is Marcel Hoog. Gold already this year at the European Championships in the 8, the 1500 and the 5000 metres, which is in here. Zhang Yong, bronze medal at the world back in 2019, silver at the Asian Para Games the year before that. Alexei Bionchuk of the Russian Paralympic Committee, he took silver, his best result in the 2013 World Championships in Lyon. And Brent Lakatos doesn't need much of an introduction. He's the reigning champion in the 100 metres in the Paralympics. He's won World Championship gold over 100, 200, 400, 800. He's also won the London and Berlin Marathon, so he can go at distance as well. So 10 go in this one, expect it to be cagey, expect it to be rather tactical. But as always, the man out in front, Marcel Hoog, always likes to take control of the race if he can. Sometimes they might sprint out to a lead and just see if the field will come with them. Sometimes they may just stick there for a bit and let someone else do the work. Waharam's looking quite comfortable in second position. One of the things you do not want to be doing in a sport like this, wheelchair racing is sitting wide in the track, so it's rare you'll see someone going too wide out for a long period of time because it's just making them do a little bit of extra work, which they don't want to be doing. Hence Marcel Hu just trying to set the pace out in front. He's a master tactician, is Marcel Hu. He's been around for a long time and he knows what he's doing. He holds the lead at the moment from Waharam. Brent Lakatos, the Canadian, in third position. And yeah, Marcel Hoog's just had a look over his shoulder and maybe given the sign to Waharam that you may want to come around and give me a bit of a hand here because we've got a long way to go. But it is Hoog who's still out in front. 35 years of age, Marcel Hoog. He lives in Notville. Conkrack of Thailand now leads in the men's 5,000 metres T54. They've got around eight and a half laps remaining in this race. His compatriot, the reigning Paralympic champion, Prawat Waharam in the number seven helmet, 
He's just stuck on the outside at the moment with Marcel Hoog in the white with the silver helmet there, just blocking off Waharam. He's sitting three wide, is the reigning champion. He won't be hanging out there too long. So he's just having a bit of a rest now. Just sitting up there, repositioning himself. As they move through with eight laps remaining. So it is Thailand who leads through Prithiret Kongkwak, but it's not Prawat Waharam, the reigning champion. Brent Lakatos now takes up the running at the front. This will get frenetic in the last four laps or so. There's no doubt whatsoever about that. Lakatos is normally a man for the shorter distances, but he does do the marathons as well. So he's quite adept to be able to show that he's got that stamina to finish through. Roman Czech, the American, just sitting second from the back there who didn't have the greatest of 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio, out in the first round in all five events that he was in. But he's a solid character, does motivational speaking, and he knows how to get himself into a winning position as Marcel Hoog just makes a slight break across the line for seven laps remaining. And Hoog is a vastly experienced competitor he goes out to a quick pace and as fast as he does that he slows it back up again lurking at the back of the field is Dai Yung Kuang of China he's been just sitting there just biding his time at the back and watching what's going on because they're only spread by around 20 meters or so at the moment so that's not really much to make up if they do start to get going. But Waharam's sitting ominously on the shoulder there of Marcel Hoog. But he's been sitting out there for a, a long period of time. Bjornchuk, we haven't mentioned him too much, in the light blue helmet there in fourth position. As Hoog goes, and Bjornchuk has just put a move on as well to make sure that he doesn't get left behind. But there's no one that's been left off at the moment, although there is a slight splinter at the back, and Romanchuk is part of that, the United States athlete. But at some point, someone's going to have to make a move. Someone's going to have to go. And nine times out of ten, it's Marcel Hoog. But the thing about the Thai athletes is they're extremely strong over these long distances. We've seen the likes of Rawat Tana in the past. Konkrak's in this. Waharam has been there for a long time, since Sydney 2000, winning gold medals at these championships. And he knows what it takes. The advantage the Thai boys have is that they can really conduct this race as a team. I just occasionally get the feeling that Marcel Hook's getting frustrated with them, that they're not going to take a share of the lead now. Perhaps they will, though. Marcel Hood likes it when someone does jump out and then sets the pace and it sort of breaks the field up somewhat and then he can really try and work out what his game plan is going to be. But at the moment, they're all sort of looking around and trying to work out who's going to be the first to go. You can throw a blanket over the, the whole field at the moment. When they come around, they'll have four laps to go. So it's going to be a race over 1,600 metres in effect rather than 5,000 metres because they're all stuck together. Who get in front? Waharam has been sitting wide, though, for the past three or four laps, so he's done a bit of extra work. I suspect at some stage he's going to want to either tuck in behind or he's going to want to get out in front himself. Lakatos has had a little look at the screen as he went past because they've got those big screens at either end of this magnificent Olympic stadium. So it does give you the option of having a look up there and realising... Just whereabouts you are. At the back there, number nine, Da Yung Kwang. He's been sitting at the back the whole time. He's just rocked back on his heels a few times there and had a bit of a rest and let the wheels run through and just afforded himself a bit of time because that's what they've been able to do in this race. It hasn't been remarkably quick up to this point. Romanchuk hasn't exerted much energy. He's second from the back, but that means nothing at this stage. They head across with three laps to go. Marcel Hoog in first, Waharam in second, Bionchuk sitting on the inside, and Lakatos of Canada is in fourth position, but nicely placed on the shoulder of Prawat Waharam of Thailand. So Waharam, the defending Paralympic champion, 
Marcel Hoog, the European champion. He broke that Paralympic record in his heat and semi-final going through for this. He's a very experienced campaigner. The longer it goes on, the more things are going to be going through their minds and they're going to be thinking, who wants to make the move first? It will come at some point, and when it comes, it'll go quick and everyone else will have to react to it. But Marcel Hoog is currently in that top position. The man from Notville, the silver bullet, also known as Huggy Bear. Here comes Lakatos. And he's got frustrated with nothing happening out front and Hoog goes with him. And uh, Hoog's, uh, I think, tactic with the tie boys not willing to take a turn in front where he's just going to push them wide for three or four laps. And so they did cover some extra territory at uh, Lakatos now into the lead and Hoog up beside him. Well, Lakatos is good at those 800 metre races and that's pretty much what he's done. He's turned this in to an 800 metre race because they've all been at the same speed throughout. It hasn't been overexertion and Brent Lakatos is usually a shorter specialist but Lakatos leads. Hoog is on second place and coming around the outside it's uh, Romanchuk of the USA who finished second to Hoog in his heat as Romanchuk around the outside but sitting nicely it's Brent Lakatos. Lakatos in the gold medal position at the moment with Marcel Hoog back in third. Waharam's boxed in so it's going to be a bit of a tussle for him to get out from that position. Brent Lakatos trying his best to hold on. He's trying to hold off Daniel Romanchuk there and see if he can pick up a gold medal at the Paralympics over this longer distance of 5,000 metres. Hoog's trying to get to the outside. The Swiss silver bullet is trying to do his best. He's doing just that. Hoog's gone to the outside. Marcel Hoog has taken the lead from Lakatos and Marcel Hoog's going to take the win from Lakatos and it is in third place. It looks like Higuchi Masayuki of Japan. So Marcel Hoog has taken the win 10.29, 88, it's not a fast time. It was very cagey throughout, and Marcel Hoog is the Paralympic champion over 5,000 metres. Well, he led for most of the race, and if you were weighed up on that basis, he deserves to win. He did all the hard work, Marcel Hoog, and he had enough left to run down Lakatos. Lakatos with a silver medal. Conkrat got the, gold, the bronze in the end. He snuck over ahead of Romanchuk and Bionchuk. Close for that third position. Well, I think you summed it up nicely for Lakatos' chances that, you know, a bridge too far, a lap too far for him, but not for Hoog. Marcel Hoog, the men's 5,000 metres champion, his second Paralympic medal of gold colour after taking one in 2016 when he claimed the 800 metres in Rio. But who got to the outside? He did all the work early. He was waiting for someone else to come with him. He snuck around two or three wide with around 100 metres to go and Lakatos did his best to hold on. Lakatos made a move with two to go. He tried to turn it into a shorter race because they were all there and he tried to put the sprint on, which he's very good at doing. Hoog first, Lakatos second, and wonderful performance by Conkrak to pick up the bronze medal. Waharam looked like he was in a position for most of the race to try and defend that Paralympic title. But it was that man there, Marcel Hoog, who's added to those three golds at the European Championships in Bidigosh back in June, and he's just continued where he's left off. There's no stopping him. Paralympic record in the semi-final. Now he's the Paralympic champion. That man there with a silver medal, Brent Lakatos. And Thailand through Konkrak pick up the bronze.